One of my favorite things to forage is Ganoderma lucidum, otherwise known as reishi. Reishi or lingzi mushroom is a medicinal mushroom that's been used in traditional Chinese medicine for thousands of years and it's known as the mushroom of immortality. And it's known for this reason because it has a lot of very powerful health and wellness benefits. And these range from improving the immune system to having anti-cancer abilities. It helps to promote a sense of well-being and has anti-xylytic and antidepressive effects. So reishi is a very powerful medicinal mushroom. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can identify it in the wild. I'm gonna talk more about its health and wellness uses and I'll show you how you can prepare it into a tea for your own use. Unlike guild mushrooms, of which thousands are known to be dangerous or poisonous, polyphora mushrooms are relatively safe, and there's only a few dangerous species that exist. With that said, care should still be taken with identifying polyphora mushrooms, because even though they're quite distinctive with their pores on the bottom of the fruiting bodies, you want to make sure you have one that is safe for you to use. And reishi is one of those safe polyphor mushrooms that has lots of health and wellness benefits. Reishi can be found growing out of hardwood stumps and logs in deciduous forests throughout the world in temperate and subtropical locations. And this includes North America, Europe, South America, and Asia. Reishi can be found growing anytime it's warm and humid. And this is typically late summer and fall. And because reishi takes a long time to grow and is relatively slow in decaying, it can often even be found during the winter. Reishi is easily cultivatable, which is good because it's not the most common mushroom to stumble upon, though I have it growing on all the old stumps throughout my neighborhood. So let's go walk the neighborhood and find some reishi. So we have a really nice reishi fruiting body here. And this is very distinctive because it has the three layers that are commonly seen with the reishi fruiting body, otherwise known as the mushroom. So we have this white outer layer here on the edge and that blends into the pores on the bottom from which the spores are released. And you'll see this reishi fruiting body is growing out of this old hardwood stump. All these are. This is where the reishi mycelium is. And as it gets to a point in its reproductive stage where it wants to emit spores, it will create this fruiting body from which the spores fly out and hopefully for the reishi, inoculate other hardwood stumps or logs. So you have this white outer layer, and then very distinctively, you have this yellow or golden or amber tan middle layer. And then on the inside, it becomes more of a red orange, a burnished orange, or even a burgundy color towards the very center. So this is a very distinctive reishi fruiting body here. And this is good because reishi often doesn't look like this. It can be, if it's an older reishi fruiting body, it can be much more dark in color and can be much harder. This one is fairly soft still. So this is a younger reishi fruiting body. And sometimes they will only show just the white layer or they'll just show just the first two layers. It's not until the reishi fruiting body is very developed and mature that you'll get all three distinctive layers. So when you're first identifying reishi, make sure you look for those three distinctive layers because that will ensure that you're not identifying uh, some other polyphore mushroom, which could be dangerous if misidentified. So when you're harvesting reishi, you just want to take a pair of snips or a knife and just very gently at the base, just cut through it. And one rule of forging is you never want to pull more then you will use, and you never want to completely take everything because there's other people and there's other life that utilizes the reishi mushroom. So just take what you need. And here we'll just take this fruiting body. And luckily the mycelium, the, the reishi mycelium that's embedded in this hardwood stump will re-sprout a fruiting body uh, no problem once the temperature is right and the humidity is right and it gets some rain. So it's not a problem to harvest in the wild as long as you're respectful and mindful uh, and don't take more than needed or appropriate. So this is a beautiful reishi fruiting body here. Again, it has its three distinctive layers and it has that wonderful uh, bottom, very bright white. You want to be careful when 
harvesting reishi or any poliform, you want to be very delicate because if you grab the bottom underside and handle it in such a way that you're not respectful, it will bruise these pores and it'll turn brown and it's best to keep this as perfect as possible. So you want to be very gentle in handling uh, a reishi mushroom. You don't want to grab it by those pores. You want to handle it by the top or you can see here kind of where it grew through uh, rat, uh, grass and roots and everything. You can grab it in that area too. And you want that uh, underside to be as unblemished and as undamaged as possible. So this is a beautiful specimen right here and we'll take this back and we'll make some tea with it. Something to be mindful of when foraging for wild reishi is to make sure it's suitable for your use in the first place. So I found these two older reishi fruiting bodies just nearby and you can tell that they're older because of the dark burgundy color. They're relatively hard, they're dry. And when you flip them around, you'll notice that there are different types of mold already growing on them which excludes them from use from any sort of herbal preparation or tea, tonic, tincture. So be mindful of the reishi that you're collecting and make sure it looks young, healthy, it has those vibrant bands of white, amber, and burnished orange. And if you have any reishi that doesn't fulfill those qualifications or maybe has grubs that have burrowed into it or has any sort of alteration to it that doesn't look good, leave it there. It can still do its job by emitting spores and reproducing, but it's best that you don't consume it for yourself. Reishi has been used for thousands of years for its health benefits and medicinal qualities. And these are derived from the unique compounds that exist in the reishi fruiting body. An organically bound type of germanium is found in reishi mushrooms at a relatively high concentration. Germanium is an element not considered essential, but at low doses, it is credited with immunopotentiating, anti-tumor, antioxidant, and anti-mutagenic activities. Over 140 different types of triterpenes have been found and isolated in reishi fruiting bodies. Triterpenes, as the name suggests, are a collection of three terpene units. Terpenes being unsaturated hydrocarbons, which have many different biologic functions throughout the body. Triterpenes have powerful cytotoxic effects on cancer and tumor cells while also being radioprotective. Reishi also contains high levels of polysaccharides, which are used for storing energy, sending cellular messages, and for providing support to cells and tissues throughout the body. There are more medicinal compounds found in reishi than just these, and it's the unique combination of all of them together that makes reishi such a potent wellness enhancing mushroom. Reishi can be used to treat fatigue and metabolic disorders like insulin resistance, and reishi is an adaptogen for the immune system, reducing its activity when chronically overstimulated and bolstering it when weakened. And in general, reishi increases the amount of active immune cells present. Now that we've learned some health benefits of reishi, let's brew some tea. The first step is you want to let this dry for a few days. You can use it right away if you need to, but it's a little easier to prepare if it's been dried out for a couple days. And I already have some wild reishi here that's been drying for a few days. This piece here has been drying for about five days. And it's already quite a bit harder. And some of these pieces have been drying just for a day or two. And you can see that they're still more supple and pliable. So we'll use the uh, reishi here that's been drying for a little less than a week. And there's two ways you can prepare this into a tea. I like to add reishi as part of an herbal blend. So I already have Siberian ginseng and ginger, chamomile, and licorice root in this tea bot here. And what you can do is you can simply take some scissors and slice the reishi directly into the tea, just like so. And this is a really easy method because it makes it no nonsense and all you need is a pair of scissors or perhaps use a knife to cut it up. So you can do that right there. Or what you can do is if you want maximum extraction is you can use a grinder here. You can add all this nice finely ground reishi to your teapot here, just like so. And typically for brewing tea, you wanna get away from a lot of that bitterness and astringency. You can use water that's 170 degrees. 
This water here is about 170, might be a little bit more. That's fine. And you simply just pour over and let it steep for five to 10 minutes. And again, this blend that I have here is Siberian ginseng, which is good for vitality. You have ginger, which is good for the immune system and for the nasals. You have chamomile, which is a very calming and relaxing herb that helps to stabilize your heart rate. And there's also some licorice root for flavor. So simply just pour over and after five to 10 minutes, you can press it down. When you steep for longer than 10 minutes, that's when things really start to get bitter and astringent. So you can see it's already starting to extract. Of course, there's more than just reishi in there, but that is my general health and wellness blend that I use. It's really, really effective. So there you have it. There's a lot of ways you can use reishi. You can take whole caps like this, slice them up and boil them for one, two, three hours on a low setting and really make a powerful decoction. You can also just take a little bit of reishi, slice it directly into your teapot, or you can take some reishi, grind it up, and really get a more potent effect that way. If you don't have wild reishi growing in your neighborhood, then you can enjoy all the benefits of reishi by buying some reishi caps online, like from a purveyor such as Mountain Rose Herbs. They sell a lot of organic teas and spices and oils, and they're a really good resource for anyone that's interested in boosting their health and wellness. They have good prices and fast shipping. I use them for a lot of different wellness products and I recommend that you check out their catalog. Please share this video with others who would benefit from the medicinal properties of reishi. I can personally attest to how much it's helped me. I haven't been sick since I started drinking reishi and I also feel more energy and more vitality in my life. And while I've been drinking reishi myself, so has my aunt who has chronic myeloid leukemia. This is a disease, a blood cancer that attacks the immune system and reishi because of its anti-cancer and immune modulating effects has made a tremendous impact on her disease and helped her heal uh, a lot and now she's much more invigorated in her daily life thanks to reishi and in general herbal teas so that's n equals two but i wanted to share that experience with you and i hope that reishi will help you in a similar fashion or at least work in a preventative manner. If you want more videos like this, please hit that thumbs up so I know and share any thoughts you have in the comments below. In closing, I would say don't underestimate the power of herbal remedies like reishi and other herbs and peace and love to all. Namaste.